Welcome back to Altera. On today's episode, we'll be testing two common debate points when it comes to carbon versus steel barrels. First, which is more rigid? And secondly, how does heat dissipation really compare between the two? Stick around to find out. And if you're enjoying our videos, consider subscribing or leaving a comment. <laughs> Hey everyone, we're here at the shop. We're gonna do a rigidity comparison between two very popular carbon barrels, both in seven millimeter, 22 inch, and two seven millimeter spiral fluted steel barrels, all of which are within three ounces of each other. And what we're trying to determine here is how much deflection or point of impact shift you're gonna get if you put a suppressor on or if you have a, a charge weight what your point of impact difference is going to be so basically if you have different charge weights or in a less rigid barrel your point of impact could be significantly different after we get done with this test we're going to take you out to the range and do some heat dissipation testing so what we're going to do here is install the first carbon barrel to determine what the deflection is going to be we're going to put it in a an exact spot to compare apples and apples here. I still need to move it about a sixteenth of an inch. And we're gonna set all these barrels to the same distance. And then what we're gonna do is put a dial indicator right at the very end. So we got our barrel length set to 19 and a half inches exactly. We have our indicator sitting right here on the shoulder of the muzzle. We're gonna add a suppressor, it's 18 and a half ounces, and we're gonna see how much deflection there is in this. And after this test, we're gonna mount another carbon barrel just to have a larger sample size. And then we're gonna do the same thing with two steel barrels. Try not to bump it here. So we're about 8 thousandths deflection. We had it on zero and it moved back about 8 thousandths of an inch. So what we're going to do is set up three more barrels, two steels, one identical carbon, and we're going to see what the deflection is on these. So we just removed the suppressor just to show you that it went back to zero. Now we know that we didn't induce any error into this test. So now we're gonna do the next carbon barrel. So now we have our second carbon barrel mounted here. Again, set to the exact same length, chucked up the same way in this machine. And now we're gonna see what the deflection is with the same suppressor on this barrel. This will just give us a second sample size, a second sample. So again, we have about, it was zeroed, and we have about seven to eight thousandths deflection with the exact same suppressor hanging out of the chuck the exact same length. That's good to know that these two barrels are repeatable and get the same amount of deflection. Just to show you that we didn't induce any error again on this carbon barrel, the needle goes back to zero after we remove the suppressor. So we know we have a good test here. So we have this barrel chucked up in the machine, set to the same length, indicators in the same spot. Barrel deflection, again, same caliber, same barrel length, set to the same distance in the machine. We have five thousandths uh, deflection with the same suppressor on here. So just take, just finish taking this off. As you can see, we're back to zero after removing it. So make note, this is the lightest barrel out of the four that we're testing here by an ounce. So we've set this barrel to the, <coughs> <coughs> ah, hairball. <laughs> So we have about six to seven thousandths deflection in this. 
still better than both of the carbon barrels. <clears throat> We're gonna remove it now, make sure our dial is still zeroed. And again, you can see our dial is zeroed, so we still have a good test. Based off of this test, there's no way that we can make a claim. Again, there's only a sample size of four, but there's no way we can make a claim that carbon barrels of the same weight are any more rigid than the steel barrels. Again, sample size of four, but I still think, based off of this, that the steel polluted barrels are more rigid than the carbon barrels. And now we're gonna go to the range and do some thermal conductivity tests and see which one dissipate heat best. Hey everybody, we're here at the range. We're gonna do some thermal conductivity tests. Uh, the general principle, or at least what uh, a lot of the internet says, is carbon barrels dissipate heat quicker than steel barrels. And we just wanted to put some numbers together and do some actual testing. So here we have a thermal coupler. It's basically a thermistor. And wait, we're gonna wait, wait. A thermistor? Well, that's what the sensor is on the end. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Call it what you want to call it, who cares? They can Google it. Yeah. We have a thermal probe here that we're gonna stick inside the barrel at a predetermined distance. And this basically touches on the metal and gives us the temperature. We're going to test this on the inside and then we have a non-contact thermometer where we're gonna test uh, the temperature on the outside. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run <clears throat> uh, one shot and then take a temperature inside and out every minute for 10 minutes. And then we're gonna do three shots and six so shots. And again, do the same 10 minutes of testing, temperature on the minute for 10 minutes. Whichever barrel has a higher temperature on the outside quicker has the higher thermal conductivity rate, which means it dissipates heat faster. We're trying to test whether carbon fiber barrels dissipate heat faster or steel barrels dissipate heat faster. Cool? Yep. Ready? Yep. sitting in the shade for a bit. We're gonna take internal and external temp as well before we get rolling. And then we'll start off with our one shot, three shot, six shot string. Yeah, everybody go. <laughs> So we collected all the data for this test. We're gonna go back, put it in the computer and see if we can put it in a format to share with everybody. Stay tuned. Here we are, we have results. So we showed you that we tested uh, two steel barrels of identical weight, spiral fluted steel bar barrels of identical weight and caliber and two identical carbon barrels same weight and caliber as the steel barrels. And what we found was, at least in the case of these, 
the steel barrel was more rigid than the carbon barrels. Then we wanted to check because all carbon barrels or a lot of carbon barrels are made different. The carbon layups are different. So we decided to, ch to check a couple other barrels. These are Hell's Canyon Armory barrels. And you can see this one's two inches longer. This one is the same weight as the steel barrel, even though it's two inches longer and it was equally as rigid as the steel barrel. And then we tested another Hell's Canyon barrel and this one's two inches shorter and several ounces lighter. And this was the most rigid out of all of our barrel tests. So what it basically boils down to is depending on the carbon wrapping method that determines the amount of deflection when you have weight at the end of it. And some, we know that this carbon barrel manufacturer designs these barrels to have the least amount of deflection when suppressors are put on the end. So basically to make a broad statement that carbon barrels are more rigid than steel barrels, I don't think we can do that. Unless you really know what you're getting into, there's no way you can make that blanket statement that the carbon barrels are more rigid than steel barrels of the same weight. All right. Yeah, you want to move into this shot? Yeah. Tent test? What do you got, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, really this first shot, you know, one shot, there's not a ton of information to be gathered. I mean, we even cut the test short at four minutes because they had kind of returned to the temp they started at. It really, I mean, we could probably just kind of toss this out. There's probably, maybe if you really split hairs, you might be able to say one thing or another, but I think it would probably be bias on one shot. Yeah, there's not enough yeah. data here to, to really paint a picture. So let's check out what the three shot group looks like. So on three shots, now we're kind of starting to get something that uh, maybe you can interpret just a little bit. Basically, we took the shots and then tested for 10 minutes, right? So uh, immediately after the, the first three shots or the three shots, the internal temp of the carbon increased to a little bit higher, about four degrees higher than higher the, than the steel yeah which is kind of interesting and then internally they basically match they're both internally increased temperature steel barrel got a little hotter internally and then they progressively cool almost at the same rate exactly the same yeah i mean it probably comes down to like the instrumentation that we used yeah but at least one carbon barrel manufacturer claims is that carbon barrels heat up slower and they cool faster mm -hmm. and again we only had one carbon barrel to do this test on and one steel barrel to compare it to again equal length barrels same ammo same day of testing same number of shots and testing basically taking these measurements all at the same time but at least from the three shot group it, it doesn't look like there's anything drastic so then definitely not conclusive that you could say that all carbon barrels are going to cool faster heat up slower versus all steel barrels they're almost the same if not the carbon barrel gets a little hotter faster so then we go to shooting six shots and again the carbon barrel internal temp gets hotter than a steel barrel mm -hmm. and the carbon barrel external temp takes about two minutes to reach its peak temperature whereas the steel barrel drops off after one minute the temperature the externally drops off after one minute and basically it's very gradual cool. It lost almost all of its temperature externally in that first minute. Just visually looking at this graph, it seems like an analogy there might be like the heat kind of gets dammed up in the carbon where the carbon and the steel meet. Almost like it's, it's an of, insulator. Yeah, almost like it's an insulator. Like if you were to go out and just hand feel, shoot three shots and feel it, it might seem like right after you shoot, oh yeah, that's way cold. It just takes a while to get the t the heat that was produced through that carbon so it's almost like it's slower to heat up to the external temperature faster on the internal temperature and then the rate at which they both cool is is about the same uh, about the same especially when you look at the three shot the, the rates about the same the six shot generally is about the same so then we created another graph here that's basically reporting on the data after the six shot test this is an average 
internal and external. And as a whole, it looks like the carbon barrel on average is hotter, especially to like minute four. There is a good bit of difference there. It kind of stays for four minutes is definitely hotter. Uh, after four minutes, they get a little bit closer together and, and cool at the same rate. Yeah. And again, we're only talking a few degrees there, you know, five, 10 degrees up until four minutes. And then after that, it kind of comes down to, uh, maybe five degrees or so difference. Yeah. Still, I don't, I don't think there's still a ton of information to say for sure. Carbon X, Y, Z steel X, Y, Z. I don't know if there's really information to say one is so much better than the other yeah definitely for like we did all these tests based off of hunting rifles these are hunting weight barrels these are roughly the number of shots that you would take in a hunting scenario six shots would be you messed something you really up. messed something up <laughs> so you're right as far as like proving or having some glaring data that says mm. that carbon barrels get hotter, uh, slower and cool down faster. I, I just don't see that here. Like you said, for the hunting customer, maybe it really doesn't matter. I mean, six shots, you're kind of doing something wrong. You, I mean, yeah. how often do you take six shots at an animal? But I think if you're coming at it from, uh, maybe a customer that wants more of a tactical, uh, competition competition Go to shooting school yeah he's that kind of guy and, and again for the barrel temperature test we only had a sample size of one of each barrels mm -hmm. so if we wanted to really test this and get more conclusive data we should have had probably 10 of each rifle as a minimum but 20 would be better so we actually have a better sample size but what we we're hoping for here with this test was to see if these claims were like glaringly obvious. Yeah. That carbon barrels heat up slower and cool off faster. Mm -hmm. And based off of our testing, it, it looks like if anything that's not true, it's probably opposite. Yeah. Looking at the broad view of this, if a customer is really, really stuck on, you know, I kind of like the look of the carbon, but I kind of like the idea of the steel and I'm flipping back and forth. I don't really know which one to choose. Is there any information here that says like, for sure you need to choose a steel barrel over a carbon or a carbon barrel over a steel? Is there anything they can learn from this? No, not really. There's no, there's definitely no data pushing them more towards the carbon. That's for sure. The, the data says, shows, that basically for normal hunting use, at least in our six shot group or up to our six shot groups, that the barrel temperatures and cooling rates um, really don't make that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to that time and you wanna build the, the dream rifle, both of these for hunting use are gonna be rigid and both are gonna have about the same cooling performance. So flip a coin. Flip a coin. <laughs> How do we want to end this? He's, I don't know. He's still going. Though. I don't know. He's going to put. I'm waiting for he's gonna you put, guys to end the damn thing. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to end it. Let's just not end it. <laughs>